Hi guys, it's Eric Weiss. Today I'd like to show you a really fascinating lock. It's the High Shear LK1200, um, which is a, a US American military padlock that was produced between 1982 and 83 only. Uh, so this thing is 40 years old. Um, and uh, as far as the former owner told me, uh, this one was used uh, in Germany uh, by the US facilities here uh, in the context of securing um, weapons and ammunition. Um, so this is uh, probably a, a very heavy lock uh, for rough environments and uh, high security applications. Um, it uh, weighs about uh, two kilograms uh, and I think its size uh, becomes uh, um, more visible when we compare it uh, with a standard German padlock, for example, this Avis uh, 8540, which is uh, quite common in Germany. And yeah, it's uh, you see the difference. Um, I don't know, this one uh, weighs about 43 grams, and this one weighs about uh, 2150 grams. So uh, you can imagine uh, the difference between both of them. Um, okay, but how does this work? Um, it has a medical core. Um, I have two keys. One of those uh, I have uh, uh, modified uh, to be a control key. Um, and yeah, it says uh, property of um, US military, do not duplicate. Um, it's a medical um, standard original core with six pins. Um, so this uh, should not be easy to open, I think. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, the key works nice. And yeah, as we turn it, the shackle retracts. And yeah, that's, that's how it works. So, but uh, the more important question is, uh, will we be able to pick it? So, uh, without further ado, let's put it in a vise and see, see what, what we can do. As I said, it's a medical core, so we have to push and rotate the pins. And I already know that pins two and three are tapered mushrooms. Um, so I will try to preset them in the beginning as early as possible and I know that I have to push them again in the end. Um, so yeah, let's start. Pin number one is binding. Try to rotate it already in the right direction. A bit into the click. Pin number two, try to preset it. Also click and pin number one again, still jiggly. To also preset three. And again, check one and two. Everything's still jiggly, no four. Also jiggly. Check the others again. One, two, three, and four once more. And five. No. Not yet, six maybe, no. <clears throat> then again from the beginning, one, still jiggly, two jiggly, three, not so much jiggly, but okay. Number four maybe, little click. The others again, one, jiggly, two jiggly, three jiggly, four still jiggly, and now five is Binding a bit, yes. Also a little click from that. Again, one, two, three, four, five, and now six. Have to be very careful with that one. But this feels good. Now number two is another click, number three, and we're open. Okay, that was easier than expected, but be warned. This looks easy, but it is actually not, because uh, it took me hours of practice to get that uh, so far. And <clears throat> yeah, let's put it out. You see, it's open. And let's look what's inside. Uh, what is really fascinating about this lock, um, let's close it up again, using the key maybe, 
what is really fascinating about this lock is uh, that it is so simple in its construction. Um, normally there's uh, a special um, control key, but uh, this one came without it. But it's easy uh, to create one by simply uh, filing a little notch uh, into one of the other keys so that it can rotate a few degrees counterclockwise. Um, and then you can simply turn the whole mechanics out. So what remains is simply uh, the shell with the, with the shackle. The shackle cannot be removed. This is a piece of metal, solid piece of metal. And uh, yeah, the rest, the mechanics is all in that piece. Um, yeah, this piece is held back uh, by this, uh, by these two bolts. And um, when we have a look at the uh, control key again, what we see is uh, when we turn the key, um, it, uh, it retracts. And in normal operation mode, um, this uh, goes into the housing, so uh, that this piece is uh, fixed. Yeah, um, we have an actuator here, and this is uh, what actually holds uh, these bolts back. Uh, it's a ball bearing, and in normal operation, this ball bearing runs uh, around this rim here, and. Um, in control mode, uh, it pops into this hole, uh, and then the um, the shackle uh, retracts, uh, and uh, the part can be pushed uh, put out. So that's the uh, actuator. <clears throat> then um, we have this. Uh, this is the core, uh, and it uh, should be simple uh, to push it out. It's not screwed in or something. It's just uh, it's just loose and can be pulled out. There it is. That's this medical six pin core with a, a special uh, cam piece, <clears throat> which is part uh, of the core actually. And um, then we have um, the ball bearing that holds back the uh, the two shackles uh, and then the two shackles themselves. They are held together by a little spring. And here you see uh, how this works. Um, the ball bearing pushes uh, those two parts apart and uh, then they come out of this housing and uh, pop into, uh, into the housing. So, um, the, uh, another piece has fallen out. This is uh, a drill protection piece shield made of ceramics um, and there's another one which is held back uh, by a metal piece this one and this is simply a shutter plate uh, also made from ceramics um, that is uh, inserted for drill protection so the rest is a piece of metal and yeah that's it um, what is fascinating about this is there is not a single screw inside. And uh, yeah, that's really fascinating. But I think um, this is because this lock was designed uh, to be used in rough envir environments uh, where screws would cause problems maybe. Okay, then let's get the pinning tray and uh, look what's inside the core. There's a little ring, which is, can easily be remo removed, I think. It is. And a follower. Use the key again. There we go, put that aside. So um, here we see uh, this medical typical sidebar and we can also see that all the pins are in the right orientation because the 
äh, das Maul. Ne? Äh, ähm, <lacht> Yeah, you can see that they are in the right direct, direct, uh, in the right orientation. Um, so I put the key out and uh, also drop the pins out one by one. First I remove the sidebar. There are two springs, two little springs and uh, these pieces that uh, interact with the pins. And there's pin number one. Number two. Number three. Four. Five. And six. And there's nothing really special about the core, except that it has this uh, cam piece which uh, matches uh, this actuator and this lock. And uh, yeah, that's all about the core. And um, let's see, have a look at the drivers. <clears throat> let's start at the beginning. Driver number one. Driver number two is a, one of these um, tapered mushrooms. Same number three. Number four standard. Number five is also standard. And number six is also standard. Then we have some springs as expected. And the housing, nothing special about that. There's the uh, thing for the um, for the sidebar, sidebar groove, and yeah, let's arrange this a bit. Yeah, here we go. That was the High Shear LK1200. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and bye bye.